Hello again, book lovers. And here I'm going to talk about Figuring by Maria Popova. So what is Figuring? Well, that's a good question. It is essentially a biography. It follows the threads of a lot of people's lives through from around about 1840 to 1940, let's say. It focuses on some people who history should perhaps have remembered a bit better, and they are all women. So yes, this is a kind of a feminist tract, but I wouldn't even want to call it that, because it's really an interlocking biography, all of whom were women, all of whom fought for women's causes, and so of course feminism comes into the story. The main protagonists here are Margaret Fuller, Emily Dickinson, Harriet Hosmer, Maria Mitchell and Rachel Carson with some other not so brief appearances by other personalities that are involved with their stories. Now if those names are not familiar to you or maybe half familiar the question that this book posed to me is why did I not know much more about them? These women were pioneers in their several fields starting with Maria Mitchell's discovery of a comet moving on to Margaret Fuller and linking them via relations, usually erotic relations and the more the book goes on you see the more they are open, we could call them relations and principally lesbian relationships. It was the middle part of the book in fact where we went into a lot of uh, Emily Dickinson's inner life for example and we were treated to a lot of intimate letters I found my interest flagging not my cup of tea but the book is written in a poetical manner when you first get it you're not quite sure what it is because the chapter titles are such as number one only the dreamer wakes two to find dismooned among the stardust three what is lost and what is gained four of the infinite in the finite and so it goes on we're taking the lines of poems as chapter headings and poetry is another strong theme in this book. Melville crops up, Nathaniel Hawthorne crops up and the intellectual life of the eastern seaboard the USA is analysed in some detail. The book is after all over 500 pages long. What did I pick up from this book? Apart from the biographies of women I should have known about and I asked myself why these women are not considered part of the panoply of the, the feminist teachings that we get in schools these days. We seem to be stuck with Rosa Parks and Madame Curie while we could have a lot more examples. This book would make a case for interesting examples. I had the sense that things were happening a lot earlier than I'd imagined. As I say, we're starting in 1840s with a lot of women's firsts. However, when we get to Rachel Carson in the 30s and 40s of the 20th century, it is noted that all these strides that women are making in the fields of sciences and anthropology and etc., engineering is the example given, very, very rare thing for a woman to become an engineer in America. While over in communist Russia, 30% of the engineers were women, something that made people sit up and take notice. There's also a strong thread of trying to widen the circle of empathy. These women were very much fighting for all kinds of sexualities, all kinds of creatures. There's a lot of sympathy for animals, for example, especially in the case of Margaret Fuller, who was moved by the fate of some pit ponies. Later on, Ms. Fuller is given some calomel powder, which was routinely given to children until they began to salivate. An acute mercury poisoning. And here we get another thread. This is where my attention did prick up, having just survived the COVID lockdowns. This book came out just before, in 2019. This rather rampant questioning of medical orthodoxy. Uh, Ms. Carson, at the end of the book, is very hot on this, and also on the famous effects of DDT, the pesticide which caused so much destruction in its day. There are many anecdotes in this book that will stick in your head. Here's one from Simone Weil, who I'd heard of, but again, you think, how can I have heard of her without knowing that she starved herself to death at the end of her life? She refused to eat more than what her compatriots were eating in France under the German occupation. And that, combined with tuberculosis, ended up killing her. Another little insight that I find almost amusing is that these very early feminists don't even conceive of a future where 
the president might be a woman, for example. They're often talking about future lawmakers as males. And what now seems surprising to us is that when these authors are quoted, they use, without batting an eyelid, he to represent a person, the reader. I mentioned in the review of Fast and Feast that the use of she for the reader, or a person, was actually quite common in certain books in medieval times. So it's quite strange to find the ultra-feminists using it as a stand-in for humanity, where today we would use they, or he or she, or s stroke h e, or even she, as is quite fashionable now. I very much warmed to the rather fabulous Ms Carson, who also had very ill health all her life, which she stoically hid from people, as she seems to represent the flip side of what's been happening over the last Covid-soaked years. In this book, we are full of praise for her mistrust of the pharmaceutical industries and the chemical industries, and we get a long description of the rather crass opposition which was, of course, driven by vested interests. I can't help thinking that that's exactly what we've been through. In any case, there you have it. Figuring a book about, ooh, lots of things. Issues, poetry, love affairs, literature, romance. All tied together in a nice, neat bundle.